Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number. 69. Please turn to it. Page number 69 and today is our lesson number 18. Let's see what we have there. We are comparing decimals and fractions here on page number 69. The very first one asks us which one is greater. Number 26. Number 26 says which is greater. 0.778 versus 0.788 well we realize that the first digit after the decimal is the same for both of them is 0.7 and 0.7 so that plays no role essentially what we're comparing is 78 versus 88 and of course 88 is greater 88 is greater so the answer to the question which one is greater the answer is 0.788 is greater next one 27. Which fraction is greater? Which fraction is greater? And we have two thirds versus three quarter. Two thirds versus three quarter. The quickest, the simplest, the most efficient way of comparing two fractions is to make their denominator, their bottom, same as, uh, same as quickly as possible. And the easiest way to do here is you can multiply this guy, top and bottom, by 4. If you multiply 2 thirds by 4 over 4, essentially we are multiplying it by 1. Now if you multiply, multiply something by 1, we are not changing its value. Anything can be multiplied by 1. 4 over 4 is 1. Similarly, we multiply that guy by 3 over 3. And now we have 4 times 3, which is 12. The denominator is the same. All we have to look at is the top part, which is 8, and here we have 9, and of course 9 is greater. In other words, 9 twelfths is greater than 8 twelfths. That's all. That was one way of comparing this, these two particular fractions. Another way we could have compared this fraction a little bit more quickly is, uh, is like this. We have 2 thirds, and we have 3 quarter. And if we know our decimal, which I hope you know, on day number 8 and on day number 9, if you recall, we learned our tenths, our fifths, our quarters, our eighths, our thirds, and our sixths. We learned all of them. We learned how to convert fraction into decimal, decimal into uh, percentages, and so on and so forth. For all of these three categories. Now, why do I say three categories? Because the tenth and the fifth is one category. Tenth and the fifth are, is a pair. A quarters and the eighth is another category and finally the last category that you need to know are the thirds and the sixth and we learn all of them and if you remember those those quantities you will recall that two thirds is actually 66 percent 66.66 percent something like that or 66 and two third percent we don't even we don't even have to be so precise we don't even have to be so precise we just have to realize that it is about 67 percent whereas this guy is 75 percent three quarters is 75 percent of course it's greater. Next one. What number was that? That was 27. We move on to 28, the very bottom, the very last one on the bottom, on the, on the page there. On number 28, they ask us to arrange from least to the greatest. And we have 67 over 100, we have 2 thirds, and we have 3 fifths. Again, I, one more time, I keep repeating like a parrot as I know that. That's because it's very important. Day number 8, day 8, and day 9. If you have not watched those two videos, go back and watch those videos. Learn your tenths, your fifths, your quarters your eighths, your thirds, and your sixth. You must know 
those decimals and equivalent fractions by heart if you have any chance at all, if you have any hope at all of doing a decent job on the exam. Because otherwise you're going to be too stressed out if you have to think about it, if you have to figure it out. It takes too much time and it causes too much aggravation. Learn those ahead of time. 67, as we know, is 67 over 100 is just 67 percent. That was straightforward. Two thirds, we know our thirds, we know, we know one third is 33.33 percent. And another one third will be under 33.33 percent. And therefore, one third plus one third, one third plus one third is two third, which is going to be 0 0.6666 percent, which is, which is 66.6666 percent, which is 66 and two third percent if you want to be precise. So two-third is 66 and two-third percent. And finally, we know that three-fifth is same as if you want to multiply top and bottom by two, we end up with six over ten, which boils down to 60 percent. So we have to arrange from the least to the greatest. The least is 60 percent, which is this guy here. So let's arrange them. Let's arrange them. Well, I'm just going to make a note here. This is the least. Which is the greatest? This is the greatest. That's it. So you can arrange them yourself. This is the least one. 60% is the least one. 67% is the greatest one. And in the middle is 66 and 2 thirds. Let's do the next one. Number 29. Number, there is no number 29. 29 is the next topic. We're not going there. Let's do the two problems that they give you for exercises. on page number 70 on page number 70 give me one second page number 70 practice problems Which one is which fraction is greater? Which fraction is greater? Four seventh versus five ninth. Again, one more time. The quickest, the simplest, the most efficient way of comparing the two fraction is to go about making the two parts, the two, two bottom parts, same as possible, as quickly as possible. The bottom part is what, what is referred to as the denominator. Your job is to make the denominator same as quickly as possible. Do you understand? It doesn't matter how you do it. Technically, strictly speaking, it needs to be least common denominator. It does not need to be least. Just make the bloody thing the same. It doesn't matter what it works out to be. As long as they are the same, as long as the denominators are the same, they play no role. So we're going to do that here. How can we make this denominator? How can we make this denominator seven and nine the same? It's very simple. Whatever you see here, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you see here at the bottom, multiply at the top and the bottom of the first guy by that number. Whatever you see here, I see seven. Whatever you see here, multiply that fraction by seven over seven. Again, you see we're not changing anything. Five nine times seven over seven is still five nine because seven over seven is just one. You can multiply any number by one. It doesn't change anything. Same thing here, 4 7 is still 4 7 because we're multiplying by 9 over 9, which is 1. Now, here in the bottom we have 9 times 7, here in the bottom we have 9 times 7, and it ceases to play any role. It ceases to have any importance. It plays no role now. All we have to do now is to just look at the top part. Top part is 9 times 4, 9 times 4 is 36, and here we have 5 times 7, 7 5 is 35, 36 is greater. We don't even have to figure out the bottom part. We don't even have to waste our time figuring out bottom part. As I said, it no, plays no role. The fact that it is 36 over 9 times 7, and the fact that this is 35 over 9 times 7, what 9 times 7 is, is irrelevant. It's a moot point. What 9 times 7 is, is a moot point. Let's go on then. Last problem. I'm going to make a quick digression, if you don't mind, for whatever it's worth, since I used the word. Let's learn it properly. That's it. We're done with this guy. Give me a break here for, one, for two seconds. What I, let me first use the word in the context before I erase it. And I'm going to look up in my cards here. There is my vocabulary cards here. 
there aren't too many words starting with M, so it shouldn't take that long. Mood point is what we said just now. Oh, day number seven. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, I'm taking liberties, of course, I'm assuming that you don't know it. Perhaps you do, obviously, if you're a native speaker. If you're a native speaker, this might not be as, uh, as big a deal as it is for me. But if you don't know what mood point is, you can watch vocabulary video, day number seven. Just type in, always type in my name, whatever subject that you're looking for. If you're looking for some help on percentages or ratio or proportion or triangle or isosceles triangle or whatever topic happens to be, just type in that topic and always type in my name and something will pop up. Just type in Keshwani, vocabulary, vocabulary words, day seven and watch that video and you will learn it. Here what I said is that now that this is 9 times 7 and 9 times 7 is, what 9 times 7 happens to be is a mood point. It plays no role. Do you understand? We're not going to worry about it. We just have to compare the top, which we already did. The next problem, the very last one we have here is arrange from problem number 2. Arrange from least to the greatest. The first one is 2 over 9, next one is 0.22, and the last one is 11 over 50. Well, 11 over 50 actually is the easiest one to figure out what the decimal is, uh, what, what it is in decimal form, because as long as we can convert the bottom part into 100, it's very easy to figure out what the decimal is. How do we convert 50 into 100? We multiply the bloody thing by 2. So multiply the top and, top and bottom by 2. And now we have 50 times 2 in the bottom, which is 100. So what we have here is 22 over 100, which we know is 0.22. So that part is done. This is 0.222, since it has three decimal places. 1, 2, 3, let's take a 0 here and make that 3 as well. So essentially this is 222, this is 220, already this guy is losing. Let's find out what this guy is. This way, this guy, 2 over 9, the only way we can figure it out in decimal is to actually do it out long here. That's the only way. Let's do it, shall we? 2 divided by 9. How many 9's in a 2? 2 has no 9's. So we're going to put a decimal point and put a 0. How many 9's in a 20? 20 has 2 9's, which is 18. Remaining 2, let's take a 0. How many 9's in a 20? 20 has 2 9's, 18, many 2, stick a 0. How many 2's in 9's? 20 has 2 9's, 18, 2. It's going to go on forever, forever and ever and ever, amen. This will go on forever and ever and ever. So this guy, 2 9 is actually, 2 9 is actually 0 0.2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, forever and ever. Now we can compare the three of them. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this long hand division now. We don't need it anymore. We have to erase it so that we can do our comparison. Watch what happens. Let's, let's keep four of them. We don't have to have five of them. Let's keep four of them. So now we have four of them here. One, two, three, four. This one is one, two, three, stick a zero. And this one is one, two, three, four. Since they have the four same decimal places now, Essentially what we're comparing is 2222 versus 2220 versus 2200 versus 2200, I shouldn't have, versus 2200. That's it. Obviously we can figure out which one is the greatest and which one is the least. 2222 is the greatest. This guy is the least, this guy is the greatest, and they want us to compare, they want us to arrange from least to greatest, not greatest to the least, so you just change the order. So 2200 is the least one, which is less than 22, 2220, which is less than 2222. And this guy came from 29. This is 29. This guy came from this guy. 
and this is the middle one. That's all. Tomorrow we'll start a new topic where we're going to learn how to do the estimation for the in the exam. You have to know how to do estimation. You have to be very good at it because if you sit there and if you insist on trying to figure out the exact precise answer for every single problem in the exam, you will never get anywhere. You don't have enough time. And there is no need to figure out the exact precise answer for every single problem because it's multiple choice questions. The answers are far, as long as the answers are far apart enough, we can get away with estimation. But estimation is an art. We have to learn it. We have to learn how to estimate, how to go about estimating it in a way where you don't just behave like a wild hog. You, you, you take liberties, but you take liberties within reasons. That's called estimation. There is a good estimation and there is a wild estimation. Those are the, the, the wild, wild estimation actually, actually is an oxymoron. Tomorrow we'll do how, how, learn how to do the estimation. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.